dynamic game right now. Black has the early established F5, and if he gets his way, maybe he'll get a kingside attack. But something tells me Magnus is going to be just fine. When you have a fiend-kettled bishop, you normally don't get checkmated by a pawn storm, at least not like this kind of pawn storm. No, I mean, the, the English is a bit safer than some of the main line, Kings, Kings Indian lines, uh, for white, I mean. You don't get as much, but uh, you don't risk as much either. Right. A bit more conservative. All right, well, uh, remind the fans, you can interact with us on Speed Chess as this match goes on. If it remains a lopsided victory, maybe Eric and I will have a little more time to engage with the Twitch chat. You know how Eric feels about gauging with the, the, uh, the well, Twitch. I've, I've been reading the, the chat, uh, the entire stream, but there are a lot of, a lot of guys after me. Uh, yeah. I assume, I assume they're, they're, they're guys. I, I'm hoping that I'm still in the uh, uh, green or in the good crowd with the female viewers, but there are a lot <laughs> of people just, just, just uh, making fun of me, and I, I'm t taking it on the chin. I love it. I love it. You know what? They, they make fun of me regularly, too. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to... I, I, think, I think it's a passive-aggressive approach, and they see... It is. It is. I, I have yeah. noticed that, that there's a lot of insulting comments, but, if I ever, but then if I read the comment and they know they got attention, they're like, yay, right? Um, so that's kind of how it works. All right, Magnus is, he's taking care of the pawn storm, but d3 is now a problem. I don't know, unless, he, unless he's going to punch d4 through. Maybe he punches d4 open. Well, d4 runs into knight e4, Okay. I think. And you don't want to give up your light squared bishop. Okay, so d4 would have run into knight e4, and we would have had a problem with all kinds of fours no, for and me, bishops. Yeah, for me, Danny, I wasn't surprised uh, by this, because Magnus recently put a beating on me. Uh, I played him over the board for the first time for some fun games back in Isle Man, and uh, uh, you know I, I knew what was coming. Yeah, I think so I think I was an appetizer for him, a, a warm up, uh, a nice little. Uh, you, so you guys hooked up for a little blitz affair. Uh, it was an affair. I wouldn't. I'm not sure. I don't like to put labels. Uh, right, but it was it, it was open and it was everybody was consensual in that situation. Obviously, it, I would assume it was, it was a consensual affair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, consent. Okay, well, you know, I've also been a part of one of those with Magnus, lucky even lowly little I am me at a special yeah. event. He made the mistake of um, of letting me draw the first game, or let's say I made the mistake, and like he literally shifted in his chair, and I, I think I blacked out. The rest of it was so abusive <laughs> that I just, I don't even remember, he beat me 2-1 over mm -hmm. and over and over again, and... Um, it was uh, it was crazy, but the first game I like I outplayed him and it was up on time. He I should have yeah, won yeah. and he barely drew, and then after that he just it was like I I, I had I had poked the bear, so um, yeah. Yeah. anyway, Gusein wants stronger, to do a lot more. As the match goes on. I mean Magnus is like I, I mean I think he's exceptional in that case. You beat him if he loses in a tournament game or in a blitz game, he he just gets stronger. I think him and Hikaru are really really good at that. Those guys, those the thing I love about these matches we hold, Eric, yeah. I mean, seriously, like, it's so fun to see these guys. You see, Magnus is just, what is that eating now, spaghetti? I mean, oh, I, me I, I think most chess fans, you know, they see these guys in tournaments. You don't ever get this kind of up-close and personal view of them in their life. I mean, Magnus is a superstar. I mean, he's, you know, you know, people want to know what he looks like when he eats. Well, now we know. Apparently, he likes noodles. And he didn't even do like the appropriate thing where you like cut the noodles and twirl it so you don't slurp it up. He's slurping up his noodles right now. No, I, to thousands I'm impressed. Of fans. I never eat on stream, and and for first date, I never go for food. It's always for drinks because bit self con. I, I'm not sure if you know. I, I'm a bit shy about uh, eating, uh, showing my uncultured uh, eating uh, routine uh, habits yeah. in front of uh, other people. <laughs> I don't have that problem, buddy. I think my wife and I wish we still had a little more mystery. But let's not digress into that. I will say this. Uh, Magnus Carlsen's 8-1 to one victory in uh, the first portion, if you're just joining us, Magnus Carlsen mm -hmm. putting on a show, is the biggest ever. Strangely, we're now in the three-minute, but as Mike Klein pointed out, the largest three-minute uh, victory ever was actually by Nakamura over MBL. I mean, be being that his opponent is Maxime Bache the Grave, you wouldn't expect that, but um, last year in last year's championship, uh, Ma uh, Nakamura took down Maxime by a seven-game difference. So, if if uh, if Carlson really wants to break all records, including Hikaru's, he needs to beat Gusianov by seven games or more in this three-minute portion. He's in a tough spot here, uh, Danny. King G7, Bishop C5 are being threatened. The pawn on C6 is amazing because it really that bishop would be ideally placed on on D5. Yeah. Um, 
How do you stop bishop c5 and rook f2? See king g1, king uh, king g1, king g7. Bishop c5 is coming in, yeah. and black gets a bit of the initiative. So it's got to be a bit careful here. No, and there's even ideas like there's even ideas like h4 coming to pry open dark squares at some point. But I do love king g7 followed by bishop c5, and maybe white just has to run the rook back from a1 to f1. But that feels totally passive. Then you're sort of in a permanent thing. Yeah, it yeah, does. Yeah. It doesn't feel like I mean. So king g7. Yeah, and, and uh, rook a1, bishop c5, rook f1. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, ah, he found a way to get the queens off the board, or no, he didn't. So what would have happened there? Well, Magnus is still ambitious. That's that's I think what's happening here. He wants to put his king on g2, force black to play bishop d6 here. Although bishop d6 isn't uh, necessarily the threat. I mean, so Magnus didn't take e5. e5. You're saying Magnus didn't take e5 not because he thinks he's losing, but because he he thinks that he would just have yeah. a draw there, so he still wants to yeah. win. He wants to win. He wants to put his pawn on h4, king on g2, target the g6 pawn, target the e5 pawn, and stabilize. But one thing we can already see in the time is that both players are under a minute. That's one of the big differences. Everything from here on out only gets faster and, and more furious. Uh, hashtag first Vin Diesel reference of the day. So um, we've got King G2 coming here, and then I think White will... Actually, I still don't see how White is going to make progress here. I mean, every piece is pinned down to this uh, to this weakness on F2. He's, it's not about, yeah, he, he may not be able to make progress. Maybe I want to play H4 just to fix the pawns. Okay, he did this move instead. What's the idea? Is it what is it? Uh, what is the idea? If he takes it, he's got bishop, bishop e4. He's going to go for the attack. Ah, flipping. He's the going sword. for the attack because he sees he's down to twenty seconds. He's taking some risk here. I like it, Danny. Yeah, it's good for fans. Maybe now what rook b8? No, rook b8 might be slow. But what's the follow up? Bishop c5 is coming anyways, and the king is safe on the dark squares. Yeah, he but may risky. have to go king g2 and meet bishop c5. No, we can't push the f pawn because the queen goes in the back door. That's this queen was, g1, was... and that's mate. He he, I liked it, but it also might be his undoing here. Yeah, Bishop he might C5. end up going down for the first time because he wanted to win Bishop so badly. F3. Bishop f three. Yeah, no, he just lost the pawn there, Danny. And well, uh, perhaps he realized appropriately that he really he really can't lose this still, right? I mean, yes. Maybe he although just, if he was on the other side, try. If he was on the other side, he very well might might win this. But yeah, he's he's counting on his defensive resources to be adequate here. Bishop f three now. Uh, bishop c5, queen f3 check. Can you yep. get to the g6 pawn? I don't see it. But, I don't think uh, you can. And black has b5 coming at some point. We're going to get a queen side pass pawn. Ooh. So a bishop takes g6, maybe a queen takes f2, and that just liquidates into a yeah. strong end game. Okay, well, Gusenov goes for b5. This is his only chance to win. Now he's going to play queen takes f2. He's got to, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the transition into the end game is going to be the third yeah. draw of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Nice little sacrifice gives us an educational moment. Remember, everybody, as long as the bishop is the wrong color corner, you can draw those games even if you're down a piece. So the king gets into the black square corner, and it's just a draw. So, all right, Eric. Well, at least Gusenov isn't uh, he hasn't lost yet in the three minute portion, so he's got to be feeling good about that. And uh, no, for sure, I mean, we can see that based on their blitz ratings, he's actually not doing badly, right? Like Magnus right. is not upgrading in the match and. So uh, it's just just being a huge underdog, and, and uh, that's that's simply the situation here. Well, Magnus mixing it up now goes for this sort of obscure g6. Uh, Lopez White immediately challenges with d4. This is one of the sharper ways you can play against the g6 Lopez, everybody. So mm -hmm. we'll see if Gusenov is advi is taking Eric's advice, and he's going to be a little more aggressive here in the three minute portion. He needs to. He's going for, I mean, in some ways it's a positional line. You play f3, you're like, black has double pawns. Bishop on g4 doesn't have, like, a juicy diagonal once I get f3 in and, yeah. and still play it. So it's actually not going to be a sharp position. It's going to be a bit like a Roy Lopez exchange. And, okay. and uh, still, I mean, white's totally fine, but I'm not sure this will turn into... Uh, I, I'm not sure that he chose the right uh, move order uh, to, to make it exciting. He's up on time right now. Still has more time than he started the game with. Although well, you know, I, I, I have a question, Danny. You're in this situation, or you're you're down eight and a half, one and a half. Do you you know you're making draws, and you can be confident maybe that you'll make a few more draws. Do you be like, okay, I'm probably going to lose this match. Let's try to score, you know, stabilize, get a few points right. on the board. Or do you still have the idea? Let's go for a win. I really want to beat Magnus Carlson. I, I don't mind losing more games to provide myself chance at a victory right but at the same time you know the internet's gonna sort of cru crucify you if you lose right. like 20 to one and a half so well, what, we yeah. know you have the guts to never give up even yes. in a lopsided I, affair, I go right? i go for 
You go, go, for, you go it, for it, no matter what, and that's led to some some of the best content on the internet. Your the famous Nakamura battles, but you know, I I, I think I'm probably more along your lines and just you know not nearly as strong as you. But uh, I think I love to win enough that I'm willing to risk it to continue to push. But I understand you know the strategy of of, of buckling up and uh, and sitting tight a little bit. Um, you know, I don't know. I think in a match like this. The money isn't that big of a deal. If you're going to lose the match, you know you're coming up on the short side of things. Every game is worth um, a few dollars here and there. Everybody, if you if you need a reminder, the uh, the format does have it so that the um, the prize fund is split by win percentage, as you can see here. So there is something on the line, uh, even when you're going to lose the match. Uh, but but overall, I think I, I subscribe to your theory, Eric. You got to be aggressive. Go for the win. I I can simplify it, and I think I'm going to persuade a lot of people in the crowd. Would you take three draws against Magnus, one and a half points, or a win? And I think unless you're going to be play, playing Magnus regularly, that win is a good story. Right. It's a good scalp. I'll take. I'll, it's even worth less. I'll take that win over three draws. Right. Yep. Yep. So the totally. half a point. I mean, it should be by all like measures of like sporting. You would say, well, I have to take oh, the more take points. The but win. the truth is, no. You got to get the victory against Magnus. I agree. I want the victory. That that's going to impress. Impress uh, your, your grandkids one day. Yep. I don't know. I don't know that it would impress my grandkids, but yeah. Um, well, that's because you have so many other accomplishments that are just. <laughs> yeah, <fun>. right. <laughs> yeah, right. Well played. Perspective. Though. But uh, uh, the. Uh, no, my kids don't play chess. I can't get them to play chess, and I, uh, you know, they're going a different direction. It's rebellion from dad. You know, it's, uh, it's just rebellion issues. But anyway, um, Gusainov has. He is better here. I mean, this this does look like a um, a good uh, Rui Lopez exchange. And the reason I say that is because White has the majority in these positions, everybody, the three on two. And he's done a pretty good job advancing them. Is it going to be enough? I mean, I don't know. But I think that, I think that White's a little better here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, if he can, it'd be great to trade off pieces. Then you're sort of um, using that majority uh, freely. Right now, Black... You know, can maybe block, put a net on e5, put a net on d4, and there's yep. some tactics. So, uh, you do want to restrict some of Black's counterplay, and if you can get into that end game, that is the plus of this line is, yeah, leverage that uh, potential pass pawn into a very, very favorable. So he's end. not he's not worried about this knight coming to e5. Why is that? I I think you're totally right that if Black can establish this knight on e5 and start blockading the dark squares. The problem is so knight e5 here. I play knight d5 with tempo. Then I'm going to take on e5 and try to just get the queens off. Oh, okay. So this this would have been his approach here, something like this to to have the better end game. All right, that makes sense. So so here, if King C one, maybe then Knight D four. Black is getting that D file counterplay that he needs to to overcome the three on two majority. But I, I agree with you, Danny, that I like White. I don't like his time management in what is a fairly static position. Yeah. Yeah, and it's tough, right? I mean, you want to be accurate, but I think that's one thing that the more experienced Blitz players do, and, and you always see Nakamura and Carlson almost always up on time here because, you know, I mean, look at right? Carlson even bl has made a few big blunders but in the match, but he's he's still gone on to do to go do well in those games because time has, has been so important. He seems to be quite happy there, uh, quite uh, he's smiling, talking. I can't tell sometimes if he's chewing or talking or, or whatnot, but... Uh... Yeah. I wish I wish I was that relaxed when I played Blitz. <laughs> yeah, no, he is. He's totally relaxed. Well, it's easy to be relaxed when you're up eight to one. You know, you're like you're like stressed against the wall because you're you're always taking on the toughest challenge. Yeah, yeah. You know, you should do that every once in a while. Maybe take on somebody that you can beat up eight to one. Well, that's the chess bar show. That's a, that's how I try to regain uh, self esteem. You, you regain all the confidence. You, you get the yeah. mojo going again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, now Magnus found a way to get in the back door, and this is this is about to get gruesome. Queen to c3 oh, is met by, I think, no, no. 92. Yeah, and then I've, seen this, I've, I've seen this back door stuff before, and yeah. it's not going to end well. This is actually... <laughs> no, but it is a bit of a mating pattern. Yeah, this on, queen yeah, is coming this, to c1. Oh, this is... Um, yeah. I think Adir just missed that. So you can give a check. You can give a check and play knight b1. Check. And He's knight b1. do that right now. Knight yeah. to b1. Yeah. Um, but Magnus uh, is, is going to go back to d4 with the knight. Now the queen is cut off and c2's weak. And now knight d4, and yep. there's, there it is, uh, there it game is. over. It's so there's over. knight b4. Technically, there's knight b4 here to prolong it, but uh, he just needs to find one accurate move, and this is this is over. What is that going to be? I wonder if you can even just move the bishop from a6 to e2 and threaten a5, Eric. 
I like that, Danny. What Good I move. Do. If bishop e2, I'll have to play c3. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, that'll save. Okay, so he does the same idea, and I think Adir will find will find c3. But, oh, if, if c3, there was bishop d3. That would have been sweet. Ooh, good catch. Yeah, no, this is, this is, look at the time, though. Zero to a minute and a half. Yeah, it's just, you, it's just, this is just too you, much. You can't Honestly, do this. This is, this is almost like watching myself against the card, but it's even worse. A minute and a half to, like, like, it's, it's, oof. It's frustrating. And I can say, you know, uh, heading into the match, um, both players were very professional this morning, online early, hanging out with Magnus and his PJs. Gadir gets online. Uh, Gadir was actually chatting with me privately while him and Magnus were the same thing, just saying how, like, how nervous he is and how he just, like, doesn't expect today's going to go well. <laughs> so, full disclosure, Gadir kind of saw this one coming today. And, um, you know, he's, he's obviously fighting his best, but this is just a tough, tough matchup for him. So, so yeah, Magnus is uh, leaning in, eating spaghetti, enjoying the... Uh, is he actually eating spaghetti, though? No, he is. No, I, I've already seen the noodles go in, yeah. Oh. yeah no, it's, okay, well, if you see the noodle go in, then that's... Uh, yeah. Yeah. If you see the noodle go in, then you, confirmation, so... <laughs> yeah, that's, that definitely confirms something. Um, 43 minutes left in the three-minute portion, and... Uh, no, but... It's the sharp positions. Even that last game, I think there needed to be more urgency. He let Magnus essentially like when Magnus got the initiative again. He just, he just, um, right. I don't know something in the middle game. He's he's not not going for that. Well, yeah. I mean, he needs he needs to play sharper positions purely from the perspective of you have better chance of in, of inducing a blunder, even if it is against Magnus. But again, I think I think it's something you highlighted at the beginning of the show today. You were you were prophetic in your prediction. That he is a has a limited repertoire, and he's uh, he's kind of a tricky maneuvering guy. But you know, who do you think of when you think of the best tricky maneuverer you know on the planet, right? And I think, mm -hmm. um, like like you said, it's just tough for Gadir to mix it up like he would want to. When you know, it's uh, hard hard to find weaknesses here against Carlson. So. We have 42 minutes, Eric. Uh, the sun looks like it's starting to sit, go a little lower for you on the East Coast there. You changed your lighting. Actually, I have three broken light bulbs and only one working one. Um, this is the state of affairs here. here. <laughs> and the chest but, brought, uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, yes. So I'm going to be, I'm going to, how many grandmasters does it take to screw a light bulb? It's, it's literally, you have enough in the house to find out. And, so. and I, I don't know how to do it. So, <laughs> But there's only one working light bulb. I just figured it'd be better. People see less of me, and usually that's uh, that's a good thing. But this is amazing that's, that's right here. If this is, a, I have to point this out. If if knight a five is played here, this is the exact same tactic that we had on the board for John Urschel in the amateur hour but, show. But but there's knight on e seven, Danny. I can do knight takes g eight. No, I know that that was oh, the tactic. Oh, uh, oh, Urschel oh, oh, had to oh, find. Oh. In fact, he failed. He had to find that it didn't work, and he actually failed to do it. But if anybody who watches the Amateur Hour on Chess TV with John Urschel, this was the exact same tactic where in this position he failed to realize White it was forced to take a perpetual on Knight A5. Anyway, just that was like that's like amazing that that even occurred here. I mean, that literally was last week's show. That's hilarious. Um, all right. Well, uh, rookie one. If Knight A5 is played by Gadir, then Magnus can can take a perpetual with Knight F7. Magnus taking a perpetual. No way. Yeah, Gadir wants more, though. Gadir wants... Uh, I think Gadir feels like he's a little better here, maybe, taking advantage of some of the awkwardness. He has the F-file, the E3 bishop well, as a target. I, I mean, after knight a5, I can just play queen a4 and swing my queen h4, and your knight on a5 might be a bit uh, misplaced. So it wasn't a forced repetition. Right. Okay. Well, here comes knight f7, and Gadir ready to sack the exchange and, and try well, to get he, an initiative he, on the f-file. He simply blundered that, I think, Danny, because this is just worse than before. Like, now the queens are being threatened, uh, traded off, and what attack is there? Yeah. Your sort of, uh, your pieces are, but maybe bishop e4, bring the knight in, I'm not sure, but uh, I think that was a blunder. Yeah, the more you look at it, I mean, if there was no way to get the initiative with the queen still in here, there's no way black feels like his pressure is mm -hmm. any better. Mm -hmm. um, and now if the F-file is uh, is no longer under Black's control, then again, we're on the road. We're on the Magnus train right now. We're just all, we're all victims here. We're handcuffed. Magnus is the driver. He's going to take us wherever he wants to take okay. us here. 
Yeah, I mean, okay, you're black, you're down in exchange, you're down 30 seconds. He's going to, first of all, I want to make space for my king, maybe play h6, king, king h7. Secondly, I want to put my knight on f5. I think uh, here comes h3. Right oh, I thought Magnus I need, might play h3 to try to get the bishop off of the d-file. I need better s squares for my piece, and knight on c6 not doing anything. Why hasn't black played e4 like a long time ago to free up that e5 square? I don't know, but uh, it's weird here because nice move, nice move, rook d1. That's an Why inner is... with the best of them, everybody. If you take the queen, yeah. this is a transition that's easily winning for white. And if you don't take the queen, you're forced to play a move like queen c8, which yeah. just passive. So, I mean, it looks like he's just... Uh, Magnus is... is uh, he's rolling. Now, this is knight d6 is coming. He's resigned to his fate here, but he could have put up way more resistance. Uh, he's... Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, we should try to make this harder for Magnus somehow. We can start spamming him in chat. Just kidding. <laughs> this is just... Uh, Magnus is... Um, he's rolling. I mean, Look at that. Very accurate. He, yeah, no, very accurate. I'm just seeing a difference here. I mean, that bishop on g7 is bad. He had a lot of time to try to improve that earlier on when he was up a pawn. Yep. There's no sense of urgency there, and, and he's often leaving himself with, I don't know, misplaced pieces. Well, I, th I think psychologically, you know, I mean, we've talked about that in this format. You, you get down like this, and it's just so hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel, right? Especially when, in a, in a tournament game, you have so much more opportunities to gather yourself emotionally. I think Adir is just, he's just frustrated. Not to say that Magnus isn't the heavy favorite, right? But, I mean, you're right. He's not, he's not playing as well as he probably even would have if he wasn't down 9-1 mm -hmm. to one against against yep. uh, the world champion. So Magnus now choosing whether he wants to take e8 and then meet knight takes e3 with rook a1, or if he wants to play a move like bishop g5, I think, and grab the diagonal, which probably still forces black to lose. Bishop, bishop g5. Bishop g5 looks like a good move. Yeah, I, I, I like bishop g5 a little better. Yeah. Yep. But I think I think both knight e8 and bishop g5 are probably good enough. Um Okay, let's go back to some analysis here. The point, everybody, with bishop g5 is that it guards e7, so it still prevents black from finding a safe square for the rook, um, and, and Magnus indeed goes for it. So if the rook can't go here, that means any other square loses the bishop. So that's why Eric and I were liking bishop g5, and, and Magnus does it. 36 minutes in the three-minute portion. The wheels have come off for Gadir right now. Right now, we're hope we're... we're, we're we're begging for mercy, which is an absolutely horrible song by Sean Mendez. Please tell me that Sean Mendez is not on the Chess Bra playlist. I don't know who Sean Mendez is. Thank you. That was the right I, answer to that question. No, no, but I, I actually I don't. I, I would admit if I knew who he was, I, I have no I idea. I think he's Canadian, though. I think I think you should know. Just as like you're being in your yeah, Google that. I mean, Sean Mendez. Sean Mendez. He's a. Uh, he is. Like, yeah, you're right. I I. I, I, I Somehow I knew he was Canadian. Don't ask me how. I think it's just the way he sings in a in a whiny way, kind of like Justin Bieber. But um, no, Sean Mendes is the latest like male pop person. Every sh song sounds the same. My kids listen to it, and I wanna I wanna scratch my ears off. So uh, I think you brought up Sean Mendes when we were in Arizona, and you and I also didn't know that. Did I really? Yeah, uh, a, lot, a lot happened in Arizona that we don't remember. You ranted right? about your kids listening. Yeah, we forgot a lot of things. I think yeah. you ranted about John Mendes. That, that's John reason. Mendes is one of the few. But, uh, yeah, I, I rant about my kids often. You know, that's what happens when they drive you crazy. Uh-oh. Okay, Gadir made a move there with 0. .3 seconds, getting time back on the clock. Um, he actually has this interesting little pass B pawn. It, it, this, is, this is kind of an irritating position for White. Well, yeah, I just took... Gadir, a losing position and no time to come up with that, which is the is the problem. Yeah. But I, I, I like that burst of energy we just saw. Yeah. Pushing some pawns, playing actively, uh, at least generating threats. And we, I mean, we just haven't seen that today. Oh man! But now, now the threats. Are you know, it's a, yeah. Gadir's the problem for him, the disadvantage 